Finally, Lior has a, maybe a story to tell. <laughs> Whoa. Lior Zolman wants to be introduced as a tennis player. You need a dongle? You good? Um, who is grateful he was scheduled to give his two-part talk yesterday at the same time as the U.S. Open final so he didn't have to watch while <laughs> poor Ka uh, Kay, Kai, I'm so Tennessee, Nishikori got trounced. So he's going to share with you guys C++ brain teasers and um, we'll see how teased your brains get as a group. It's late. All right. I could start by telling you how my computer almost spent all of tonight locked up in a Quiznos, but I don't want to think about that. <laughs> so. There we go. I thought I was going to see my screen over here. Right now. Oh, thank you. All right. So I'm going to put up some puzzlers. These are. Uh, little time killers I put up at the, in the morning or after lunch when I'm doing a training so I don't have to sit there and grumble while people are late coming into class. And um, I picked some of the ones that I like the best and just have some fun with them. So I'll, for each one of them, I'll put it up and I just ask you to remain silent for about a minute so everybody has a chance to think about it. And then when I give the word, I'll take volunteers uh, if you think you have the answer. And the secret here is just give me what you think the answer is. Don't give me any explanation because that will give it away for everybody else if you didn't get it right. So just give me the answer. If it's right, we'll talk about it. If not, um, somebody else maybe will get a chance. And that's how they work. So, all right, let's do this. There we go. And we'll start with using. All right, it's scaled pretty well. So there's actually two parts to this. Uh, part one is in the first comment, uh, part two is in the second. Go. I forgot to mention, if you've seen any of these before, please disqualify yourself for answering. All right, so who thinks they know part one? What do you, th what do you say? Legal or illegal? Part one legal, part two illegal. Correct. All right, so go ahead and explain it. Yeah, so the answer is part one is legal, part two illegal. Right. With part, the secret to part one is understanding what a using directive does. Uh, if it's out in file scope, it's pretty intuitive. But if you use a using directive in a local scope, it doesn't introduce those names into the local scope. It makes them behave as if they were declared up at namespace scope. So you can actually redefine an identifier out of that namespace and it becomes a local variable. So the first part is perfectly legal. Right, and so then the second part is a using declaration, right? Instead of the directive, we use a couple of using declarations. Well, there's a reason they're called using declarations. They really do declare an identifier in that inner scope, and then it's an, er it's an error to re-declare or redefine that identifier. Great. So. Do I have to redirect it? Why does the redirect? What's a redirect? Right, that's what I just explained. If you use two using declarations in the place of the directive, 
you're declaring those names in that local scope. So you. Oh. Well, see at shift five uh, in the very last line. You mean right? Yeah, it's a it's an actual shift. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Let's do another one. Now, this has got to be my favorite. Don't give it away. Go. Read the slide for the, read the slide for the question. Oh, I'm sorry. Oops. Sorry, good catch. <laughs> Not a compile error. I wouldn't do that to you. Remember, shh. It's really important when I ask for your hand here that you just give me the answer of what's the behavior. Don't explain it. Don't explain it. Shh. Okay, hands. And go for it. You said it's a recursion, so what's the behavior? OK. What? So from the sound of that, you didn't really say the truth. So I'm going to take somebody else. Uh, very end there. OK, that's close enough. It blows up the stack is what happens, OK? So what's, what's the problem here? OK, let me do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to insert one keystroke. <laughs> I'm going to hit one keystroke, and I'm not going to change the semantics. You ready? One keystroke, and it's not where it was supposed to be. It's right here. I have to push the button harder. OK, there's the keystroke. It was an enter key. Same exact program. It's a label. It's a label. I, I wrote a C compiler once, and I wrote the library in C. And uh, this was a C compiler, a C library. So in the implementation of the printf family, there's a function that does conversions. And I misspelled a uh, default keyword in a switch statement as defalet and shipped the library that way. <laughs> Compiled. And then two or three months later, I finally figured out why I was getting bug reports with why certain format conversions weren't working right. And that's when I decided the compiler should diagnose labels without go-tos. It just might be a useful thing. OK. Let's do. In line. This one's a little different because it's not a puzzler that has a right or a wrong answer. This one is a matter of style. And I just find that it's, it, it's an interesting thing to think about. So what we have here is a header file for some class T. There's three ways to declare an, um, an inline function in a class. And all three are 100% equivalent semantically. In other words, it doesn't matter whether you use option number one, which is to have an in situ inline. That's the first one. Option number two, declare your function in class with the keyword inline, and then define it out of class, but in the header um, without the keyword inline. So option two, the two lines go together. Or option number three is declare it in class with no special adornments, and define it outside the class with the keyword inline. So whether it's option one, two, or three, it means the same to the compiler. There's no performance difference. There's no meaning difference. Is there any reason to prefer any one of those over any of the others? So think about it for a little bit, and then we'll just take a few answers, and I'll give you my opinion. And it is just an opinion. I have a question that I hope is not a spoiler. Uh, is option four to put in line in both places? 
No, no, there's no tricks on this one. I know you're not used to that, but <laughs> this, this one really is just a serious style discussion. I just find it something that is interesting to think about. Yes, you could put in line on both, but uh, there's no point to that. So I just used the three most likely, I think the three reasonable options. And the, the fourth one is legal, but okay. So let me just take some opinions. Go ahead. So two is banned. It sounds like you would prefer number one if it's short or number three, okay? Uh, one is shorter, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. And you, your opinion is shared by some very esteemed folks who I've discussed this with. Okay, other opinions? Anybody? Uh, let's see, very back corner. Yeah, sure. Okay, so you like um, advertising the fact it's in line. Okay, uh, go ahead, next person next to him. Uh, I actually prefer option four, which is option one with the word in line in front of it because it's both explicit and there's no. Uh, let's just stick, okay, let's just stick to my three options. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Case, we don't have a half hour. <laughs> Pablo. So I, I like option three best in general. But I go with option one not when, not because of sh when it's short, but when the best documentation for the function is it's in. Hmm. Okay. So one more. Go ahead. I have to say you can toggle the power tooling between one and three. And <laughs> this. <laughs> the, we don't. You know, the tooling isn't an issue here. Okay. So let me. Let me give you my opinion, and it is just an opinion. Um, my preferred style is option three. So let me give you a scenario. Um, okay, before I give you the scenario, whether a function is inline or not is an implementation detail, and the person who said number three, I think, nailed it um, there. That, that's really what, what's most important to me. It's an implementation detail. If you're, what part of a class is the most universally important? You know, the class definition or all the implementation stuff outside of it? Who needs to know about, who, what's the largest group of individuals need to know about? Interface. The interface, right? Which is typically the public part of the class definition. And all that other stuff, if I'm an, a user, a client, a consumer of a class, I'm gonna just ignore everything that when it starts getting private or protected, uh, unless I'm inheriting from it, but let's not worry about that. Right, I'm interested in the public interface. Everything else is an implementation detail. Um, with regards to inline, let's say I've just written uh, a bunch of code for another group, and I'm the writer, and another group in my company is the consumer of that code. And I'm sitting at my desk, I get a call from one of these other users using my library, and he says, hey, Leo, I really think you should have made you know, the function x inline in that class of yours, and I go, oh, you think that? Did you profile it both ways and determine it would have been better? And he goes, well, no. I, said, well, I thought so. Blam! I can get back to work. <laughs> People need to have this level of trust that an implementer is doing things right. If I'm a consumer, user of the class, do I need to know if it's inline or not? No. I just need to know the interface. How do I call it? Inlining is an implementation detail. And Inline is going the way of the register keyword anyway. In 10 years, no one's going to ever write it because the compilers will all be smart enough to inline things when they need to or not. Therefore, I think there's no information about whether it's inline or not that needs to clutter up the class definition so someone can read just the basics of what they need. Option three gives somebody reading the class definition the minimal and complete set of information that they need to use that function. That's my opinion. This is a religious issue. So there's going to be disagreement, and that's great. But you know, it's nine o'clock. Thank you. <laughs> ten o'clock. It's nine o'clock in some time zone. It's ten o'clock here.